In this episode, I'm gonna cover displaying the snack bar using the global key. I'll start off by creating an application with two tabs. Then I'll construct a global key for the page scaffold. And after that, I'll pass the global key to the tabs widget. Then in the tablets widget, on change, I'll show the snack bar. So to get started, I've already created an application in Android Studio and I have a very simple application to start with. In this application is a material app. This material app has one home page and one route. The route that I've added is the tabs page. So if I go down, I'll look at the home page. The home page is a simple scaffold which has a button which routes to the tabs. Let me click on that on the left and I go to the two tabs. So I have a left, I have cars, the right, I have transit. And then I have two identical widgets for each tab. So let's look at that. So the tabs page, it has a scaffold, but instead of its outer widget is gonna be the default tab controller, which has gesture listeners so I can swipe left and right to go to the tabs as well. As you can see, I can swipe there from left and right. So this scaffold has an app bar and it also has a tab bar view. This tab bar view has two widgets, a cars tab and a transit tab. So let's look at those. They're identical widgets, so I'm gonna explain one of them. So the cars tab, it has a switch in it, a switch list tile, and I, have an internal state variable named enabled, which allows me to set the state. Let me do that on the left here, set the state. My goal is when I tap on the switch, I want to display the snack bar with a message. And I'll do that in the code here in a minute. Okay, so the transit tab is the same configuration as the cars tab. So to get started, I'm going to locate my tabs page because I'm going to use the scaffold in that tabs page. So, okay, so let me scroll to the tabs. I have located the tabs page and the scaffold. So to get access to the snack bar, I need to identify a global key or the scaffold's global key. So how do I do that? What that means is I'm gonna type in the key argument here or the key property for the scaffold. So I'll name this variable scaffold state. No, oh, I'll name it scaffold key to represent my global key. So I'm gonna define this variable at the top here and declare it as a private variable with the underscore starting at the beginning and scaffold key, and then I need to instantiate it as a global key. One thing about a global key is it's a little bit more expensive for the application, so let's just review that. I'll command click on global key key and let's look here it can also accept a debug label and i won't cover that in this episode but that's something to be aware of the global key i just want to point out can be different or the key value can be different types key value key object key and unique key and i've seen some other types than this as well and i won't cover that in this episode but i just want you to be aware that there are some other options for the key value or the key type. Oh, and I'm gonna put new just to be consistent in my instantiations here. Okay, so the global key, it can also take a generic scaffold state, and it's just the counterpart to the stateful widget for the scaffold. So just real quick, if I were to locate that in the widget, I could command click on the widget, and I scroll down and look for its counterpart, the state implementation, and it's gonna be the scaffold state. And that's how I found it. You can look through the, the class definition or the class construction and find it usually in the widget library. Okay, so now that I've created my global key, I wanna pass it to my widgets that I wanna access this scaffold state so I can show the snack bar from, and how would I do that? Well, I'm gonna go and define a property in the cars tab and transit tab, or so I can use it as an argument to pass it. So, well, how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna go to the cars tabs widget, and I'm gonna add a constructor for it, so cars tab, and the constructor will have optional values because it doesn't explicitly have to have a key each time it's constructed, so I'm gonna give it the key, and then use Dart Syntactic Sugar to give it the parameter, let's say this, and I'm gonna name it scaffold key, the same name. But I also have to pass the key up to the super class, the stateful widget, and that'll be super, and I'll pass the key. 
So that just simply says, pass it up. And then I have to finish the definition for a scaffold key. So that means, what's that final string? Nope, it's not a string, it's a global key. Scaffold state. And I'm being a little bit verbose, you don't have to put the generic here. But in this case, I'm gonna go, let's say, scaffold key. And that should define it. So when the constructor is instantiated or called, it will add or pass the value to scaffold key. Okay, so I did that. So I need to do it to the transit tab as well. So I'm going to repeat this process. It's always good to repeat, repeat, repeat. It makes it easier to, to build your applications over time. Okay, so I need to add a constructor. Transit tab. That I, oop, I spelled it wrong, so I'll just copy it. And okay, so the constructor has an optional arguments. Key, key, because it doesn't have to have a key. And then syntactic sugar for this scaffold key. And I have to pass it, the key up to the super class. So I'm going to go key is key. So that's just that says the key argument is passed up. So I need to define the field for this class, and that's going to be final global key. And this time I'm gonna skip the generic just for effect here, scaffold key. Okay, so that passes the scaffold key into my children, transit tab and cars tab. Well, let's define that up here and the children in the cars tab so I can now pass it. I've gotta pass the reference. Scaffold key argument or property is now equal to the underscore scaffold and I just see I made a spelling mistake so I'll copy it and paste that in scaffold key and I'll correct that with a refactor of the name here in a second so I'll right click on this this is cool you can go refactor and rename and I'll name it scaffold key refactor that's slick nice option the IDE can do. Okay, so now I'm passing the global key from the scaffold of the page to the children of the widget so I can get access to it. Well, now how do I get access to this widget global key, which is my external state variable in the stateful widget? How do I get access to that external state variable? Well, I'm going to go down and I'll show you how I do that. Well, after I on changed is called with a boolean value. I'm going to say if statement. If the statement is true, let me show the snack bar. So I'm going to go widget, which calls the external state of this, or calls the external state up here. And then I'm going to go widget scaffold state. I'm going to command click on that just so you can see that it references that widget with the IDE. And I'm going to go Okay, current state, the current state of this widget, and then I'm going to, or the scaffold in this case, because I'm calling the scaffold, and then I'm going to say, what do I want to show? Snack bar. Okay, so I need to construct a snack bar. It wants a snack bar, so how do I do that? Let me just scroll up here, and then I'm going to go var snack bar equals, I guess that's lowercase, equals new snack bar and now it wants some content so what should i give it i'll just say new text something simple that says uh what does it say cars enabled something easy let me just capitalize that okay so that's easy and then i want to do i'll just copy this and do this the same thing in the other class the other transit tab just before lo and the same on changed value. Why is it not working? Well, I, this is a very good problem to have, and it's because I left off the generic up here for the scaffold key. So it needs the scaffold key. Now, or state, it needs to understand which type of global key this is. So it has to have the generic identified so it understands what type of widget or what type of object this is so I can call it. So now it understands, okay, for this widget, scaffold key is a global key of scaffold state. So then I can say current state show snack bar. Otherwise, it will not work. So leaving off the generic does have an impact on how your application is working. 
So in this case, it's very important to give it the type or generic type so I can call it. And okay, so that basically constructs the two snack bars. Well, let's see this in action to verify it's working. So I'm gonna run it from the beginning up here. Click on the run or debug. And this should start my application over from the beginning so we can just see it. Hot reload is a quick way to do it too, but in this case, I'm just iterating to show you how to do it in this tutorial. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to back to route tabs. Okay, so I'm gonna to slide to the transit, just or click on the transit and I'll click on the switch here. And there it is, cars enabled. Well, that's not right. I forgot to change it. Let me just change that and hot reload it to transit. Then I'll click on the hot reload button. And over here, we'll just go ahead and click on it again. Okay, it transit enabled. Go to the cars widget, transit enabled. Okay, so excellent. So let me just review quickly because I've covered all the bits that I need to. In the tabs page, I've put in I've constructed a scaffold key that I can pass to the children and then I set it to the argument of the key of the scaffold to get that reference and then I pass it to its children scaffold key. Now this is a global key that I can use within my app and it has to be unique. I didn't cover the other keys that you can construct. And then so in the cars tab, I looked at the cars tab in the stateful widget constructor construction, I had optional arguments and I used syntactic sugar to construct the global key reference. And I used the generic value for the global key to construct it. And I did the same thing in the other widget, so I won't do this twice. So then on changed is called, if the value is true, I construct a snack bar and then I get a reference to the external state variable the scaffold key, current state, and then I show the snack bar. So that concludes this episode today. Thanks for watching. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.